Welcome to Curie Electronics. So today we are going to solve the remaining 30 questions of URC 2017 Technical Assistant Electronics question paper. Let's go to the question first. Question number 31. In a microprocessor, the term pipelining refers to this pipelining use used to increase the speed of processing and it is fetching next instruction while the current instruction is executed that means one instruction while while executing one, one instruction it fe fetching the next instruction that is called the pipelining for high speed bulk data transfer in processor based system commonly used method is <coughs> the for bulk data transfer we use direct memory access direct memory access not interrupt control not polling data transfer through execution these are or for a small amount of very little data and for high Bulk data, we use the direct memory access. Question number 33. In advanced microprocessors, cache memories are used to. See, when you buy a, uh, when, you, when some processors uh, might have built-in cache memory to increase the speed, that is also to increase the speed. These cache memories are used to hold the current and active segments of program and data this is the right answer that is to hold the current and active segments of program and data rs232 is a it is used for serial communication so it's a serial bus for data communication See, we generally use one IC that is called MAX232. This will support, this, this IC is used to make this RS232 communication, that is serial bus communication. Question number 35. Entity declaration in VHL code describes this entity this what is entity declaration what is entity uh, hardware hardware abstraction of a digital system uh, let me write it here hardware abstraction of a digital system is called entity entity See, that is hardware ab abstraction of a digital system oh, it could be a one gate or a, a multiplexer like that it's called a entity here Entity declaration in VHL code describes what it describes how to interface this uh, with uh, the external word that is input output. So external view or interface of the module that is what the uh, entity declaration VHL code describes. In VHDL bidirectional data bus is declared. If it is bidirectional, it should be in and out. Question number 37. In VHDL, assert statement is used for. This assert statement, uh, it is used to get some uh, uh, warnings, error messages during simulation. So answer is, the right answer is option B. There is one more statement. A report statement that also similar to this assert statement so it is 
This asserts statement is used for reporting warnings and error messages during simulation. Propagation delay of flip-flops used in counter design largely affects the speed of operation of which, which type of counter that is that is a ripple counter or asynchronous counter here uh, one flip up we have a number of flip flop counter will be made up of number of flip flops so there will be a number of flip flop then what happens if this is having 10 nanosecond delay this in a asynchronous or ripple counter this delays will get added up but not in the case of synchronous counter all synchronous counters are faster than ripple counter or asynchronous counter question number 39 a code in which each decimal digit is represented by a group of four binary bits is called that is the bcd binary coded decimal each decimal digit that means five if you want to represent this using a four binary bits how do you represent that is zero a one zero one this is five because for a single digit we use four bits this is the binary coded decimal now let's take a what's a number nine what is it one zero zero one this is nine so this is the bcd next question a memory with eight bit data bus and eight bit address bus can store a maximum of so we have a data bus that is a uh, eight bit to I hope it is B7 to B0. Okay, now this is a data bus with this memory location. So, like this, we have 8 bit data bus, 8 bit address bus. So, if we have a 8 bit address bus, once it is accessed this particular memory area, first address, it can immediately go to byte. Byte wise, it can read and write. So eight address bus can read how can have can read how many memory locations that is two to the power eight that is how much will come it comes to two fifty six so few two fifty six bytes of bytes this address bus this eight bit address bus can read two to the power eight locations that is 256 memory locations and each memory location can hold one byte of data because we have 8 bit data bus and the answer is option a 256 bytes it is 256 bytes question number 41 the maximum number of binary binary bits required to represent a digital digit of octal number is it is we need only three bits three bits three bits how in the we have to represent zero one two oh sorry zero one two three four five six seven zero equal to 0 0 0 will write 1 equal to 0 0 1 2 equal to 0 0 2 oh no no sorry 0 0 <coughs> 1 0 2 3 means 0 0 0 1 0 3 4 means 1 0 0 5 means 1 0 1 6 like this up to 7 to represent octal number system octal number is up to 0 to 7 only so it is one one zero so we need only three bits question number 42 in which of the following gate output is high if and only if all inputs are high that is definitely definitely all of 
we know it is the case of a AND gate. For an AND gate, only when all the inputs are high, we will get the output as high. So A, B and output is Y. 0, 0. Once you apply 0 to this, you will get 0 only. If you apply 0, 1 also, you will get 0 only. If you apply 1, 0 also, you will get 0 only. Only when, when both inputs are high, you will get output high. So what is the question? In which of the following gates, the output is high if and only if all the inputs are high. That is the AND gate is the right answer. Question number 43. The primary function of, a, of the multiplexing. When you hear this word multiplexing, you have to remember many to one. Many to one. Multiplexing many to one. That means how it will have many inputs and we have to connect to only one output line. Uh, what is that? Let me see which sentence matches. To allow a number of signal to make use of a single communication channel. See, many to one. Many See, we will have a many inputs. We will have many inputs like this. Let us assume that these are, uh, uh, then there will be single communication channel. This is a channel. So all of this, uh, this are, let us say, assume that transmitters, all of these are transmitters and these are all are going to use the same transmission channel. So multiplexing is to allow a number of signals to make use of a single communication channel. Question number. 44 spectral density of white noise see the spectral density uh, this, this white noise spec if you draw the spectral density that is the frequency versus sp spectral density power if you draw that p of f we will get a uniform line length this and this is the, actually the uh, white noise spectrum, spectral density of white noise. So if you see here, this is flat. It is through for all frequencies it is same. Uh, and it is, uh, we can say it is a flat to flat. So it is uniform for spectral density of, so for spectral density of white noise uniform. For all frequencies we are getting a same, same power. But for uh, uh, one more, we'll see something called a pink noise. There, if you try to draw the spectral density, then you will get a exponentially decaying, a decaying curve. Uh, this is uh, this is for the pink noise, or we can call it as flicker noise. Flicker noise. So for white noise, the spectral density is uniform. This white noise sound is similar to the fan. When uh, the fan runs, uh, we get a uh, so so that's uh, uh, this white noise means uh, the noise with all uh, sound frequency components, all sound uh, freq all sounds, including uh, all frequency sound will be there in a white noise. That means uh, 20 to 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, we can simply say. Question number 45. The detector that minimizes the error probability is called maximum, maximum, the detector that minimizes the error probability is called maximum likelihood detector. Maximum likelihood detector. The detector that minimizes the error probability. Hexadecimal equivalent of decimal number 10101. This 10101 is not a binary. He has only told it's a decimal number. Okay, that is the only thing here problematic. So 10101 we have to divide by 
16 to convert this to hexadecimal. What do you get? You get 631 remainder 5. Again, we have to divide by 16. We get 39. What is the remainder? Remainder 7. Again, if you divide by 16, you get 2 remainder 7. So it is, and we have to write it like this. So 2775 to the base 16. So the answer is option D is the right answer. The only thing is that we have given 10101 one, that may confuse us. The medium which reflects high frequency radio waves back to earth is called that is ionosphere. Here is a um, on the atmosphere uh, above the atmosphere that means uh, the atmosphere, biosphere, troposphere, stratosphere above that we have an ionosphere there is charged electrons are there those charged electrons what happens electrons are there not charged uh, electrons are there those electrons uh, reflect back the radio waves back to earth in an ethernet network which device is used to forward the packets based on IP address see the router that is a router is the device which looks into the IP address and forward the data packets that is the router how many bits internet address is assigned to e each host on an IP version 4 which is used for all communication with the host in IP version 4 we use 32 bits address uh, 32 bits to address the computers or hosts there is one more thing and now there is a one more uh, version is there that is the IP version 6 in this IP version 6 uh, to address the host we use 128 bits okay this is the ip version 6 but in ip version 4 it is only 32 bits which multiple access technique is used by ieee 802.11 standard for wireless lan and it the answer is csma ca that is carrier sends multiple access collision avoidance collision avoidance Question number uh, 51. If IC equal to 12 milliamps, IB equal to 0 0.4 milliamps, the transistor would have a DC beta of. So, uh, beta equal to IC upon IB. What is the IC here? 12 milliamps. And what about IB? That is 0 0.4. Both are in milliamps. So, I, am, I know I need to write it. So what will 12 upon 4 what how do you do multiply by 10 both numerator and denominator now if you divide what happens 120 divided by 4 that is 30 so 30 is the right answer for this question question number 52 collected drift region is introduced in power bjt2 collector drift region in is introduced in power bjt that is to block the voltage large voltage during off state question number 53 load current is always negative in type b chopper it is type b chopper 
this question paper is somewhat more uh, theoretical question paper i think but the first second part second 30 questions most of the questions are, are theoretical questions ah logical expression uh, what is the expression he has given a or b a or c equals to now if we open up this what you get a a or a c or b a or b c correct a a a c b a b c which is equal to that is a and a equal to a or a c or b a or b c now uh, a we will take it common that is 1 or c or b a or b c if you do that what do you get 1 or c equal to 1 1 odd with anything will give 1 so a or b a or b c which equals now we can take a again outside so 1 or b or b c so what we get again we'll get a or b c a or b c do we have the option a a or b c we have the option in the answer a or b c option b is the right answer if a 24 megahertz oscillator is used in 8051 microcontroller the time taken for the timer to wake one increment see what happens uh, this in 8051 microcontroller with the internal frequency or me or machine frequency will be whatever the oscillator frequency given divided by 12 so if we use uh, let us take a 12 megahertz crystal first 12 megahertz crystal you have used so internally it will get divided by 12 so 12 megahertz upon 12 so one machine cycle is going to be 1 megahertz and 1 megahertz means what is the time period t equal to 1 upon f so it is 1 upon 1 into 10 to the power Six. So one microsecond we will get one microsecond, and so if we use a twelve megahertz crystal, it is going to be one microsecond, and this is the uh, this one microsecond pulse is fed to the timer. But what happens if you if you use a twenty four megahertz crystal? Twenty four megahertz crystal. This time should come down by. half correct that you need not to write everything because 12 megahertz it will provide a period of 1 mega 1 microsecond 24 megahertz to provide a period of 0.5 microsecond so and this we are feeding it to the timer so every 0.5 sec 0.5 microsecond timer should increment that means using the timer if you want to provide a delay should be minimum 0.5 microsecond using the uh timer so the answer is 0.5 0.5 microsecond question number 56 in 8051 which of the following statement is true oh it is regarding the stake pointer and the stake pointer address is 81 okay stake pointer direct address is 81 and it is only byte addressable so the answer is option option d is the right answer okay stake pointer direct address is 81h and it is only byte addressable question number 57 bit this s count this is a serial control register in serial control register usually all 8051 registers are 8 bit registers so uh, it is sm0 sm1 
SM2. Then we have receiver enable. This SM0, SM1, SM2, these are the different modes of operation of the serial communication. Then we have RE receiver enable, TB8, RB8, received 9th bit and received uh, transmitted 8 bit such kind of TI transmit, transmitted indirect flag received indirect flag means after trans TI and RI sets after transmitting and the receiving so here what is the question a bit B3 in SCON register of 8051 microcontroller indicates B3 so this is a B0 B1 B2 B3 that means the TB8 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 it is used for the transmit transmitted ninth bit answer is option C transmitted ninth bit TB8 question number 58 a c a preprocessor in c is see this preprocessor is 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 for the compiler uh, so uh, what is the thing uh, what is a suitable answer here a directive to compiler to perform thing after the compilation of it should be before a directive to compiler to perform things before actual compilation process so answer option a is the right answer a c a preprocessor in c is a directive to the compiler it is for the compiler to perform things before the actual compilation process starts question number 59 the break statement in c programming is to exit from See the break statement we generally use with the switch switch case then to exit from some uh, loops that is while loop for loop do while loop so here right option is for loop question number 60 this is the last question today so with this question we are going to complete 2017 URC question paper so if all, I hope these videos are useful to you. If you like the video, please share with your friends and don't forget to hit the like button. So let us let us finish this question paper. In C programming, if an integer is to be entered through the keyboard, which function would be used? We use scanf to get the formatted data. We can get integer also, char also using this scan a function string also this gets get che get care all these are for strings and the character if an integer is to enter through then we use the scan of function so next in this series let's try to solve some other question paper of urc only i will take it up so thanks for watching